This deep crystal and bejeweled and highly detailed Ghost Town series table is titled Return for Lost Gold. This is how it was made. First, a 48 by 17 inch wood blank was pre-coated with matte black and placed on a work surface for careful arrangement from small to medium log slices. Slices ranged from hackberry to oak, mulberry, even some desert ironwood. Half slices were placed around the edge to form a border, sanded slightly flat where they touched each other. Then all the slices were glued down, leaving an open area in which a swatch of black ripstop nylon fabric was glued. When this dried, we began composition of the individual scene components. The 7-inch full moon is an astronomical photo reproduced on luminescent plastic, backed with paper and applied to black nylon substrate with spray contact cement. Over the nylon, we used 4 pounds black sand to both surround the slices and fill in the edges of the ground and sky. The trees are made of dried hedge branches because they have dense branching patterns. We used Semper Viren's branches for our table. The old shack is made of profoundly insect damaged hackberry and its roof is hand drawn 12 by 2.5 inch, printed on plastic and backed with metal foil and then faux aged with various inks and paints. It applied to a wedge of wood to hold it at an angle and then glued over the moon. We had a dead cactus wood, that's choya wood, various rocks and ores, including petrified wood and river rock, and we finished off with blue sand for the creek, and two old prospectors carefully drawn and painted with luminescence behind the central tree and standing in the creek. Luminescent stars and water highlights were added, as well as some dark red luminescent pigment behind the spider webs in the old window. You can see that in this step, corrugated plastic was used as a form, clamped firmly in place to constrict the sand in the many layers of rosin. Rosin was added at no more than a half inch depth at a time to preserve integrity. After two layers of rosin, we added handcrafted barbed wire and rough posts, bats flying in front of the moon, and a spider web across the porch. Once the rosin layers had filled the main scene, we added an old October 31st, 1881 newspaper clipping describing the demise of the old miners and their return for their lost gold now falling out of an old bucket just off the porch and scattered around in the quartz all around the table edge. It is genuine 24 carat Italian gold leaf. Thirdly, a special challenge for this table was the ghost town wood edging. We built two eight-foot-long silicone foil lined channels on outdoor workbenches. The channels were first lined with metal mesh, and then very fine concrete mix was poured in atop the mesh, into which the damaged old wood was pushed, followed by rosin layers to eliminate bubbling from the old wood and extreme low spots. This required many passes with a heat gun before the rosins set. When our rosin pores were cured, we carefully pried the mold apart and coarse sanded the edging, slightly beveling the edges prior to fitting and gluing this deep plastic edging to the table scene. The Black Forest Artisan logo was added at this step, and the edges were decorated with maple veneer. Three more coats of rosin brought the table up to level and full. A total of one and a half gallons of epoxy rosin were used to bring this table up to spec. The fourth step was to cut, thread, and pre-rust with acid etch the half-inch iron pipe table leg system. The final result is an eerie, beautiful, and striking 3D ghost town scene in an awesome foyer table.